Hey guys, what's happening? So, got in another CR10 S5, or it came out with S5 or 5S, but it's that massive 500 by 500 uh, 3D printer. Um, actually, this came from my local uh, local guy here. He actually watched one of my videos or saw my Thingiverse, or one of my Thingiverse page and saw my uh, undermount kit. And uh, so yeah, he printed this stuff out and uh, I was gonna help him out with it, but He's already done a couple of modifications to it. I mean, he has a micro switch on there. If you're not familiar with the micro switch, it's, it's a dual uh, dual drive. But the cool thing about that is it's not, I mean, I do actually like the Bontech better um, with the gear reduction, but the um, nice thing about this is you don't really, if you want to stick with the stock firmware, you don't have to mess with the E-steps. Like if you were to go to like a four to one gear reduction Bontech, you'd probably be in like the 415 uh, E-steps for your extruder. Um, touch um, yeah he already has a e3d uh, board already so with the 2200 drivers so I'm going to have to custom make a firmware for that e3d board for the uh, you know CR 10 500s which funny is I already I already did it with the other machine so I hopefully could just redo uh, um, I'll just redo the uh, I mean I already had the bin file so but for the exact same thing but I well the other one actually had a Bowden set up so um, but it should make a difference because the E steps haven't changed because there's no gear reduction. Um, you know, typical CR10 S5. But I'll show you what this guy has done to this one so far, and some of the things I'm about to figure out. Um, obviously, he's, he's already printed out my undermount kit, so I have that to install in there. So the undermount kit, what that does is it takes all the stuff out of that control box and mounts it underneath it. So I originally had designed like a like a box and stuff here. So all this, all this stuff is on my Thingiverse page. So it's a, it's an undermount box and it mounts to uh, under, under the thing. So it mounts a uh, Creality board. In the case for the the other printer I designed, it was a uh, for an E3D board or not E3D, but the uh, SKR board uh, E3 Mini, which I think is a much better board than the uh, Creality board. Problem with the Creality board is they don't have an EEPROM. So if you're trying to save your Marlin settings, there's no EEPROM. You can't save them, but it saves them to the SD card, and not a, a specific EEPROM. So, LCD mount. Bring some legs out. These are—I don't think these were my original legs. Maybe they were. I can't if they were or not. So I'm gonna have to get some M4 with some T nuts, which I already have. A couple of the power supply mounts I designed. What's cool is it's, it's cool to see some other person print this stuff out because. You know, I mean, when I designed it, I designed this over a year ago, and but it's cool that somebody was able to print out my design. They uploaded the thing first and see the real results here. Um, okay, all right. So, a couple other little things they got here at bag. Um, so what's in here? Okay, that's, I'm not going to probably use the filament sensor because it's a direct drive no longer. This would probably work fine. Um, I mean, I guess I could top mount it, but I never I never really personally like these filament sensors. I feel like they just kind of got in the way and, and messed things up. Um, this will make sense here, uh, what, what, why I'm actually having to switch probably to a solid state relay. Um, this is also the guy that he brought over here. I mean, I'm not going to give you his name, but this is a solid state relay. It's actually known as a triac. I made other videos about the difference between MOSFETs and tri or MOSFETs, yeah, MOSFETs and tracks or solid state relays. You use a for DC, you use a MOSFET, and for AC, you use a solid state relay or a triac. I mean, they're, they're both transistors, right? But one is designed to transport AC, and the other is designed to transport DC. Cool. That you have a there's a thick power cord because these heated beds and take or draw down an insane amount of power so i'm gonna flip this over and i'll show you what this guy's the bed he's upgraded to like one of the main issues with the, the original heated bed for the s5 was that it didn't go all the very edges it went to like here but it didn't go all the very edge so this guy and even like one of the the original one that i had done right he actually bought another element too i'll make another video about that but um you know, if you don't heat the whole thing, you know, it's like you, if you, 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 you try, if you're trying to print like a big uh, part, right, the, the, the thing will come off the bed. It won't stick the bed. 
Um, yeah, so you lose a lot of heat. I mean, yeah, it's still kind of warm, but you're losing a lot of heat around the edges. If you have a really big part, it's not going to stick. So, um, let me flip this over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so here is, that's the new heating element. So as you can see, it goes all the way out. So the original one was actually, I was surprised too, man. It, it was a 12 volt, um, you know, for 12 volt supply, right? Which took a long, long time to heat up, you know? So, typically with lower volts, you have to draw more amps. So when you draw more amps, you have to use thicker wire. So this bed is actually 120 volt uh, AC. So I'm going to figure that all out. So you have your thermistor wires here, two thermistor wires, and this is supposedly is 120 volt AC. So that's why the I would be putting a triac. So I might redesign the box the box I originally created, uh, maybe to house the triac. Um, the thing about triac, so even like with MOSFETs, but triacs even get hotter than MOSFETs. So. I mean, this board takes 1,300 watts. I mean, that's like an insane amount of power for, for a heated bed. Um, I mean, it's because it's such a big bed, you obviously have six wheels. So it's a little, I mean, it's obviously it's more robust than a, like a CR-10, like a regular CR-10, just because it's a huge bed. Um, what else? That small pancake motor. I told him to pick this up. Um, just because you want to make the uh, extruder as light as possible. I guess he's upgraded this too already. The that's definitely a, a for sure thing to do. Is get these uh, big uh, mounts because it's just too wobbly and that's too big. Um, like it is hard to control ghosting with this with this printer on the y-axis, just because it's so big. You're moving around so much weight that it's hard to control. I mean, you have to print slower. You can actually get some decent quality prints. You just got to print slow. You can't print fast. I wouldn't go uh, more than 50. Um, and definitely be able to need to control your acceleration settings. Um, like you don't want to accelerate too fast in and out of corners too fast. Um, it'd be nice to get some adjusters here, like a adjusting knob. What else? So yeah, it looks like he had this custom thing on there. All right, so I got to disassemble this box, get all the old wires out, and figure out what I'm going to do with this. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, everything else I've already done before, so I'm familiar with that, but... Um, I mean, my options are either to do a uh, triac, you know, solid state relay, or the I can go like a double relay, like a regular, like a regular mechanical relay. Um, I mean, the issue with mechanical relays is that you have to control, um, you have to put a diode in there. It really depends on, like, how you're going to control it. Um, because what happens when a you know, relay breaks down, it's it's actually a, it's an inductor, it's a coil, right? It's like a, a high voltage charge will go back into electronics. So you can kind of mitigate that with a diode. There's other ways to do it, but I mean, usually like on a most control board, you'd have a thing called an optocoupler. You'd have an isolated circuit because what you don't do is you don't want to send. A, what happens is you'll send a high voltage spike back in your board, and it'll actually reboot the board. So I learned that a long time ago from like uh, controlling pumps and stuff. All right, so we've got dual Z drives. Probably ramble on too long here. Yeah, I just remember, you know, yeah, I've been doing 3D printing for a long time, and like all the original printers, like ANET and Creality, they all came with this external box, and I could never figure out. It's like they why they use like they partially use some connectors and then partially be hardwired in. Like that made no sense to me. Like why would you just not all do all connectors or no connectors? Like why half do it? You know, I really don't like how Creality uses red and black. This isn't 220. This is 110. So this should be a white, a neutral, and a hot, a black, right? It just, I don't want people, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm not going to get confused with it, but sometimes people would think that they, they would see the red and they would think that was the 12 volt rail when it's actually a 110 rail. All right, so I had the box gutted. So it looks like when he was printing out my box, that it looks like a couple of corners lifted. You can see sometimes if they lift like that, you know, if you're at 45 degree angle and it's down like that, up like that. So see how that kind of pulls up right there. So that's basically when you'd get a layer shift. The nozzle would hit that, like when it starts curling up on the edge like that, you get a layer shift. The nozzle would hit that and it can knock the uh, because there's no encoders on these motors. Like it would know that it skipped it. Well, it wouldn't know that it skipped a step, and that's why you get like a layer shift. Okay, so now I remember what I did. 
Um, so yeah, when I designed this, because he actually bought the MOSFET, because that's what I originally had done it right here, right? So, um, since we're going to be using a triac, a solid state relay, um, I'm going to need to have some sort of heat sink or some kind of um, probably active cooling. I don't think I'd want to do passive cooling. Passive means there's no airflow over it. It's just, you know, it's a heat sink and the ambient temp room temperature would cool off. Okay, making some progress here. So I forgot how long this took, man. It takes a while. So that's the power supply mounted. That's the control box. I got a new 60 amp solid state relay. Uh, a 25 just, that was like, the problem with these, these, uh, the stall state relays is that they're, it's, they're never something they're rated for what they should be. Um, so I like to over, like this thing's 60 amps. So I think this thing will probably drop about 15 amps maybe. It's 1300 watts. So 10, depending on what's going on with it. So the last thing I want to do is stress some unknown uh, triac, because who knows if this even is a real one. It's probably a knockoff. Um, all right, so I got to feed this. So obviously the, the positive and negative will feed to the bed, just like a typical MOSFET. So... And uh, I gotta figure out this. Get the access in there. Then I need to mount the power switch in here somewhere, and that will feed the power to here, here. And all right, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna keep on going with it, and I'll give you guys updates. All right, so the E3 Mini version two board that came with this printer is has some something going on with the uh, flash. I'm suspecting a, a corrupted bootloader um, because it wanted me to actually pick up a, a firmware file. Um, I'm actually, I, well, I've had to recover a few of these, not these 3D printer boards, but CNC machines, uh, boards, and like a lot of different, and there's so many different devices now that use these little 32-bit ARM processors, so maybe I'll do a video on how to recover that, but, um, so you got the, uh, this is the newer version, the, uh, version 3, I'll open it up, it's pretty cool, it has the, uh, you know, the integrated heatsink on it, so, I mean, I mean, some definitely, some little internal trace improvements, but, I mean, it's the same thing. It's a Trinamic 2209 drivers. All right, so making some progress here. Getting the wire managed up here. A lot of extra slack because they said the box used to be over here. So um, I designed these uh, a while back, these little zip tie things here, 2020 rail mounts. Um, okay, so I got to finish the, the mains. So I wanted to do the mains last, like the main power. Actually, I forgot. Actually, I need to have something right here. <laughs> the main power. So I gotta scoot that back. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video because I'm actually I have another printer exactly like this coming in that I'm just doing the heated bed. I'm not doing the full conversion on. Um, I'll go into more like uh, bed safety and like when you're converting to AC main. So when you're going from DC like 12 or 24 volt to 110 or 220, you want to have a ground. So I added this extra ground strap. So in case this thing actually like shorts out somewhere in the board, um, you don't want to become the ground. So if things, if the, if the hot wire shorted to the bed and I touched the bed, I would be the ground. That I would get a shock. I mean, it's not going to kill you if it's 120 volt, but it's, it's definitely going to be annoying. Um, all right, so I'm going to fish this back like that. All right, there it is. Wiring's well, done. A little bit more involved than I actually like, but you know, originally when I designed this box, I really did, it wasn't it was designed for a MOSFET, and not like a solid state relay. So the wiring is a little bit different. But uh, all right, now I got to write some firmware for this thing. Um, I mean, it comes like a standard like Ender three firmware, but I mean obviously it's a CR ten five S five. So I have to rewrite the firmware to do five hundred by five hundred, and be able to touch. As I'm doing my first bed heat, you can see that the uh, solid state relay is on. Okay, that thing turned on, the fan turned on. And I'm hoping some of this will actually come past this uh, cell state relay from the air. Uh, so what it's doing is basically, oh, you know, basically creating a short, you know, well not short, but it's neutral and the uh, hot come together and that's what creates the short and heats the bed. Okay, yeah, it's heating up. Cool. Alright, that's the first print going on here. And hold up, just doing a calibration cube. So because these printers are so big, they require lots of adjustment. So I had to go back here, my one, two, three blocks, 
I've already did some basic adjustment, but I have to loosen up the gantry and kind of straighten it out because I don't think the whole gantry is straight. Um, so it doesn't want to sit flat. It sits up higher on this side just because of the way it's screwed. So I got to unscrew it and tighten it back again. But all in all, I mean, the, the major stuff is done. So done with this printer. So here's the other CR10 5S, the original one I had done. Uh, that one's back in. I'm doing, like I said, the AC heated bed. But uh, I was kind of quick on this one, you know, but I'm going to go more in depth with uh, how to set it up correctly. You know, at least safely with the uh, solid state relays and grounds and, you know, double pull switch. Because originally Creality has a single pull switch. So with a single pull switch, you're only uh, shutting off the hot. Um, that's not a big that's not a big issue with um, you know when you're actually just running a 12 volt or 24 volt bed you know but once you start putting AC to the bed you need to have a good ground to it and also um, you don't want your neutral you don't want your neutral to uh, always be on so you want the neutral to be shut off too because if your house is not wired correctly sometimes you'll have uh, power will be back fed up to the neutral wire so you'll actually have power in the neutral wire so I've actually seen it before where the neutral wire actually has power on it. So if you actually were to hook up a multimeter from neutral to ground, you would actually get uh, some voltage. So the main thing is you don't want to have, when you power the button off, you don't want to have voltage on your bed. So there's there's more safety issues with having an AC uh, controlled bed. But I'll go on more on that in the next video, how to do it safely. Um, all right, part cooling fan came on. Yeah, kind of a headache. I had to do a custom firmware because obviously it's a you know E3D or I mean a, the SKR Mini E3 with uh, you know there's no stock firm, firmware for this thing. This big bread. There's one for Ender 3, Ender 5, but not this huge uh, S5. All right, guys, cool.